I want you to close your eyes and pray and say, Lord, I am now entering into the Holy Communion. Almighty Father, we are before you here this day to honor Jesus. And I'm asking divine, you would bless us with your peace and with your joy. We release our spirits and soul to your worship, even our body. Be worshipped. Lead us on and bless us. In Jesus' name we pray. I want to open to John chapter 6. John chapter 6. to verse 58 I am that bread of life your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead this is the bread which cometh down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Then Jesus said unto them, verse 52 rather, The Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his bread, his flesh to eat? Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Who so? Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me and I in him. As the living Father hath sent me and I live by the Father. So he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. This is that bread which came down from heaven. Not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. Jesus was making reference to himself. He said he is the bread of life. He is the living bread that came down from heaven that men may eat of it and live forever. He compared himself to another bread that came from heaven, which was manna. He said, that is not the bread. That one came from the sky. That 
that is not the bread of eternal life. Where eat the bread of eternal life, your fathers that ate of it would have not died. But I am the bread of eternal life. He that eats of me and drinks of my blood shall live forever. Shall live forever. My body is bread indeed, which is my flesh. And my blood is drink indeed. This is a mystery. God came down in human flesh for the purpose that people should eat his flesh and live forever. People should drink his blood and live forever. This is marvelous. Eating of his flesh and drinking of his blood are spiritual things accomplished by faith by an act of flesh eating of his flesh and drinking of his blood are spiritual things My flesh, what does it mean by eating of his flesh? The flesh, the body, was crucified for you. Was crucified. Eating of that flesh means being identified with the crucifixion. Believing in the crucifixion. Accepting the crucifixion. Walking by faith of the crucified Savior. That is eating of the flesh. Fully being identified with it. Except a man believes in the crucifixion. Confesses the crucifixion. Accepts the crucifixion. Appropriates the crucifixion. He has no life in him. You should believe that all Jesus did was for you. All Jesus did was for me. Can you say it? Jesus did on the cross was for me. Exactly. You believe, you confess with your mouth and you believe with your heart. That is it. You have eaten of that flesh. Except the man drinks my blood, the blood that was shed, life was gone. From him, drinking the blood is identifying with the life that was gone, the death of Christ. Because life is in the blood. He shed his blood, he lost his life. Don't shed blood, don't kill a person. He shed his blood, he lost his life. You are to identify with that loss of life. Accept it. Appropriate it. See it as you lost your life. Because he lost his life. For your sake. Representatively. 
he could have been you that would have lost that life that would have lost that life but he lost his life for your sake so believe that he did it for you that's drinking of his blood you believe that he lost his life for you that is drinking of his blood and unless a man drinks my blood he has no part with me my blood is drink indeed my blood gives eternal life which means if you have identified with my bed and say I died for you then you have eternal life you will die no more because he has died for you he has been judged for you he lost his life for you so since you have believed in him you will no more lose your life because you have accepted that he lost his life for you these are acts of faith if you believe that's how it is these things will be real when he told peter peter asked lord if you are the one invite me to come to the water and walk to you he said come that faith peter exercised made the water to have no effect on him the water is slippery is liquid does not sustain weight but that water lost its quality peter began to walk on it naturally as one walking on the ground why the faith he exercised on the word of god nullified the powers of the water to swallow somebody peter walked on it so the faith that exercised that you exercise on his blood on his flesh nullifies sin and death you will die no more sin shall not have dominion over your life in the book of Luke chapter 22 Luke chapter 22 we are talking about the celebration Jesus did with his disciples in verse 19 and he took bread and gave thanks and break it and gave unto them saying this is my body which is given for you this do in remembrance of me this do in remembrance of me this do in remembrance of me likewise also the cup after supper saying this cup is the new testament in my blood which is shed for you this cup is a new testament in my blood which is shed for you here he was telling them observe this right observe this right often in remembrance of me carry out physical eating of bread physical drinking of wine and have it in your heart that it represents 
my debt which was done for you keep remember reminding yourself of my debt my shed blood my crucifixion your life eternally rests on this keep reminding yourself keep reminding yourself of my debt of my crucifixion it is vital for you in first corinthians chapter 11 first corinthians chapter 11 verse 23 for i have received of the lord that which also i delivered unto you that the lord jesus the same night in which he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said take eat this is my body which is broken for you this do in remembrance of me Paul got this by revelation Paul got this by revelation after the same manner also he took the cup when he has supped saying this cup is the new testament in my blood this do ye as of as ye drink it in remembrance of me the, the body that's the bread the wine the cup do it in remembrance of me verse 26 for as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup ye do show the lord's dead till he come you are showing it to the world it's the gospel you are showing it to your children you are reminding one another of it as long as often as you do this you show that jesus died at a particular time he knew that the gospel was going to last long in the earth so something was to be done to keep in memory his death apart from the written record apart from the preachers let there be a celebration that should be done to show jesus died and shed his blood and whosoever believed on him should not perish but have everlasting life so this is a provision he has made a little digression Jesus washed his disciples' feet and said, I, your Lord and your Master, have washed your feet. You also should wash one another's feet. It was not a right established. It was a spirit pass on the spirit of humility serving one another it washing of feet was not observed throughout the new testament as an occasion that jesus wanted us to commemorate no washing of feet was not delivered to anyone by revelation to be observed in the new testament no but communion service was instructed and we see the disciples breaking bread from house to house gathering and eating bread from house to house and this was clearly specified many times in acts of apostles and we see it also given by revelation 
clearly specified in the Bible that at the mouth of two or three witnesses every word should be established but the same is not so with washing of feet many washing of feet is a spiritual message not a practical commemoration demonstration no so if anybody comes up with washing of feet he is doing so because they are looking for what to do to magnify the gospel after the flesh it is not a spiritual exercise there are two main spiritual exercises the water baptism the holy communion these are the two spiritual exercise the love feast love feast was observed as talked about by the early church but it's not a commandment that everybody should observe love feast no no it's not a commandment washing of feet not a commandment the Lord's Supper, a commandment. Water baptism, a commandment. Now, verse 27. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. How do you eat it unworthily? You are not born again. You are not a child of God. Don't take Holy Communion. Because you are not born again. You are not a child of God. You have sin in your life. You are practically living in sin. You were born again but you have backslidden. And you have not come to Jesus to save you. You have not confessed the sin for him to pardon you. Which, and you are stubbornly in your sin. Don't eat Holy Communion. You are living from here to go and commit immorality because you have not repented of it yet. Don't eat Holy Communion. You will be eating it on what delay. It's for those who want to go to heaven. And since you don't want to go to heaven, it's for those who have been freed from their sins. Since you love your sins, don't temper with it. Honor it. You love your sin. You prefer sin to Christ. Don't. You're eating it on what delay. You are not worthy of it. It is bread for children. Those who are born again. You may have a restitution to do, but you are already born again. This is your bread. Restitution has not hindered your Christian life. You are only praying to God and asking him for help. How you can handle the matter. God help me do my restitution. But that's a child praying. That's a child. Somebody mindful. That is asking his father, asking her father. So this is a bread for that child to appreciate that salvation you have received. If you are not born again, will you be thinking of restitution? So it's bread for born again. That which makes you born again is Jesus. Thank him. Remember him. That's why you're taking the Holy Communion. Amen. 29, 28. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. Are you keeping sin in your life? We will give you time to examine yourself and pray. In case there is any sin, you will plead with God to forgive you. You will plead with God to save you, to wash you. Then you can eat the Holy Communion. 29. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily 
eat it and drink it damnation to himself, not designing the Lord's body. For you are presumptuous. You are in your sin, in your witchcraft, in your adultery, and you have not repented. And you are eating this, it means you are laughing at the whole matter. You are just, you don't even know that this is the body of Jesus. You are just, you don't bother. You are eating damnation to yourself. Because this is a spiritual thing. You are playing with spiritual thing. It's a great matter. Don't play with it. Verse 30. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many have died. Many sleep. Weak, sickly, sleep, dead. There is repercussion to eat the bread in your stubbornness. There is repercussion. The repercussion is sickness can come. Weakness can come. Death can come. Whichever one the Lord determines that is worthy for you. Why? You all this while you didn't repent purposely. And yet you want to eat because how will they, how will they see me here sitting down not eating? Eh? How are they seeing you sitting down not repenting? It's not for your pride, not to cover your pride. It's not. Who are you? Only you know how great you are. We are not aware. To see how Christianity is like. Don't eat this for communion. Is that clear? Don't eat. You have not yet left the other people there. You have not yet left your prophet. You are still with him knocking your head to the ground. You are not for this place. You are not for this holy communion. Don't eat it. But if you have left them, left your gods, and you have come to Jesus, ah, you are free to eat. That's bread for children. That's bread for children. So don't be afraid. Let not the devil say you are on the safer side if you don't eat. Then it means you are not a Christian until you have denied Jesus. The devil is trying to lead you to denying Jesus. Because if you have believed and Jesus said, my people come to me, why are you running away? Ah, somebody, somebody say, ah, you are not sure, you are not sure. Don't listen to that voice. Move forward. As long as there is no sin accusing you. If you are a sinner, you will know yourself. Don't you know your name? Exactly. If you are a sinner, you will know yourself. But you have confessed. And you have forsaken them. The Lord has shown you mercy. You will partake of this bread. I heard of somebody saying that you were disciplined in your church because of holiness movement. Can you eat Holy Communion? What's the answer to that person? The person who disciplined you has no understanding. So you cannot, because somebody has no understanding and did what he did, he said, oh, I won't follow Jesus again. If I see Jesus coming, I will withdraw. Never. Never. When he comes to his senses, he will plead with God to forgive him for blocking the way of God. But you forgive him for he does not know what he is doing. Amen. Amen. So, we are going to give you time to pray. Bow your head in prayer. Examine yourself.
Have you believed in Jesus? Are you ready to take Holy Communion? Don't allow fear. If there's no clear sin in your life, because you are now a Christian, the Lord has accepted you. Don't be afraid. Have you been to Jesus for the clean simple? Are you washed in the blood of the Lord? Are you washed? Examine yourself. Cleansing blood of the Lamb I your garments spotless and white as snow I am washed in the blood of the Lamb Lay aside the garments that are stained with sins and be washed with the blood of the Lamb, there's a fountain flowing for the soul, unclean, I am washed in the blood of the Lamb. Keep praying. Keep praying. Keep praying. Jesus name we pray Almighty Father we pray for your children grace be given to them as they have believed so are they cleansed thank you for that in Jesus name as they have prayed unto you give them clarity in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now we're going to pray for the table. Can you, uh, yes, you pick wine, you pick bread, and come forward here. We want to. Just two people. Pick bread, pick wine, come to the front. Now we are going to pray and worship the Lord. We are celebrating the death of Christ, his crucifixion, and his shed blood for our salvation. We are celebrating it. There is power mighty in the blood, in the blood. In the blood, power in the blood, sing it united. Power in the blood, there is power.
we are grateful for the meal you have granted us graciously to honor you and praise you. God, thank you for this. May the Lord bless and sanctify them. In Jesus' name we pray. The Lord bless your children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, we will take the bread for people to pick. After which, we will take the wine also for the people. Like the man of the world, I was seeking for things that could not satisfy. Let's move. And then I hear my Savior speaking, draw from my world that never shall undry. Like the woman of the world, I was seeking okay. but could not satisfy. And then I hear my Savior speaking, draw from my world that never shall run dry. Up, Lord, I live to love, Lord. Come and quench this thirsty love, my soul. Blood of heaven, blood of heaven. Feel me to what I want, no more. Fill my cup, fill it up.
is broken for you this do in remembrance of me we are grateful unto the almighty God that has given us the privilege to partake of the body of Christ you can eat it with thanksgiving in Jesus name After the same manner also he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the new testament in my blood. This do ye as of ye as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Let's take the wine to the people. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing of my life in the blood?
an emblem to show what has been done so you can drink the blood the wine what a privilege this is more than religion it is life is reality. 
follow it well your soul shall live he is the living savior he loves you as though you are the only person he created as though you were the only person in this place close your eyes and thank him The message you have just listened to is a production of Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide is a non-denominational ministry that is given to the propagation of Christ's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, production, and spread of holiness literature and materials. For other spiritual materials, messages, or inquiry, contact us on 0813-635-6813 and 0805-683-4318. You can also reach us through our email address, holinessrevivalmovement at gmail.com. God bless you. For God so loved the world, that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world, condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Hallelujah. Jesus, I believe in you. You are my Lord and Savior. I believe